In this video, we'll replicate the header of the homepage and we'll use the Unsplash API to create a first version of our gallery. We'll use server-side rendering, the built-in page store, environment variables, and we'll create an API endpoint. I will also introduce you to some useful VS Code extensions and we'll style everything using Google Fonts and custom Tailwind configuration. Let's dive right into it. Let's start with the header. Usually a header gets added to the plus layout file because it needs to exist on every single page. But for this gallery app, I wanted the user to get a full screen image experience. So instead, let's add the header to the page file. Create a Svelte file in the components slash header directory. Add a header element with a logo, custom name, and a placeholder for the dark theme switch, which we'll add later on. Also make sure you have uploaded your logo to the static images directory. Now remove the example code from last video and include our newly created header into the page file. This looks like garbage, so let's apply some styling. Let's first divide the three items over the screen using Flexbox and then set the height depending on the width of the screen. Add some padding to the header to get it off the sides of the screen. Add some additional padding to the image to make it a little bit smaller. Center the text, but don't give it a font size or font jet because that needs to happen on a global level. For the heading font, I chose bold 700 Leto. And for the rest of the text, I chose quicksand. But of course you can pick any font you like. Copy over the links and place them into your layout file. But make sure to wrap it in a Svelte head component so that it automatically gets added to the document head. Because we copied this code to the layout file, we're sure that the fonts get loaded on all pages. Now let's change the Tailwind configuration so that we add support for the just added fonts. We could add it to the extend object to extend the existing fonts, but I prefer to be in full control of the fonts that get used on the website, so I'll add it here instead. Use the default fonts as backup in case our fonts are not available. Now ESLint is complaining because we are using CommonJS syntax instead of ESModule imports, while we are currently in the CommonJS file. So let's change the ESLint configuration to disable this rule, but only for files with the CJS extension. Now if we save this, you'll see that the error no longer exists. Next, let's extend the base styling by adding styles to the base layer, which is meant for this purpose. Set the headers font for all headings, the paragraph font for all other text, and let's set a responsive size to all H1 elements. Now that's enough about the header, let's dive into the gallery. The component doesn't exist yet, so create one in a new component slash gallery directory. Now we want to be able to pass props to this component because it needs to know what photos to render. The way to do that is by exporting a variable. We don't know the type of a photo yet, so let's use any for now. Let's keep things simple for now and just let it render a div with an image in it for every photo that's passed along. SvelteKit has its own syntax for this. We could write this out ourselves, but we can also use this extension pack, which contains three extensions. One for Svelte in general, one for IntelliSense, and one with code snippets, such as the one that we're using here. It automatically creates an each else block, which loops over all the photos and renders something else in case the array is empty. To demonstrate that this works, let's add the gallery component to our page file and pass it an empty array as photos. If we pass values, strings in this example, you'll see those printed out on the screen. But how are we actually going to fetch the actual images? That's a hard question. The final example has infinite loading built into the gallery, which means that we'll have to be able to fetch images client-side. But the Unsplash API, which we need to use, requires a secret key that we're only allowed to store server-side because of security reasons. To fix that, we can create a so-called proxy API endpoint and send a request to our own API, include the key there, and then call the Unsplash API. So this is the scenario for client-side rendering, but what if it's the first time that the user visits the website? Then it's better to use server-side rendering because that improves performance and SEO. So let's add that as well and call the API endpoint from there. Don't worry, I'll explain it further along the way. First of all, let's register as a developer on the Unsplash developer website. Create a new application and accept all the API using guidelines. Next, give the application a name and a description. And once that's done, you get redirected to the page of your application where you can copy the secret access key. Create a .env.local file and set the Unsplash access key to the key that you just copied over. And lastly, install the Unsplash.js package. Now we can finally start with building our own API. One of the extensions that we just installed makes it easier to create SvelteKit files. So let's create a plus server file using this extension and let it know in which directory you want it to be. In this file, you can export functions that correspond to the HTTP verbs. We want to create a GET request to get the photos, so in our case the default code is fine. 
Now we have two remaining questions. How can we get the query that the user searched for? And how do we get the photos based on that query? We can get the request URL from the parameters and use that to read the query from the search parents. If the query is not set, we can use the JSON function to set the response body to an empty array. To get the photos, we're going to use the unsplash.js package. They have a lot of documentation, but what's most important for us are those two parts. I don't want to add the fetch logic to the route itself, so let's create a new services directory. Import the unsplash access key from the $env static private module, which is generated by SvelteKit and can only be imported by the server. If you try to import this in a client, it will fail, but we will handle that case later. Going back to our service, create an unsplash variable and set it using the create API method from unsplash.js. Now to finally get the photos, create a get photos service file and function and let it accept the query. Import the created unsplash variable and use that to get the actual photos. Throw an error in case the result type is error. This might happen regularly because unsplash unfortunately only allows 50 requests per hour. The response body can be found in result.response.results, so let's return that. And that's basically all we need, but let's increase the amount of photos per page so we get 30 photos in return. And let's also only return the data we actually need by mapping over it and picking specific properties. We will need this type of multiple places, so let's create a photo interface in the lib photo directory with the exact same shape. Now that we have the interface available, let's use it in get photos. And now get photos is done, let's use it in our API route in a try catch block and let it return the photos as JSON. If the get photos function threw an error, we use the built in error function from SvelteKit. Congratulations, you just built your first API endpoint. If we go to it and search for tropical beach, you'll see the first photo it returns is related to Hawaii. And I'm pretty sure it's tropical there. Going back to our diagram, we now implemented the API endpoint and the code needed for communication with Unsplash. So now we just need to call our API before rendering the page to support server side rendering. And to do so, we can create a pluspage.ts file next to the pluspage.svelte file with a load function in it. Once again, we can get the query from the search params and return an empty array if it's not set. Now let's call the API and throw an error if that failed. If not, we get the body and cast it to an object with a photos property in it. And let's return that as well. Now you might be thinking, why are you calling your own API while you're already in the backend? Good question. SvelteKit actually supplies an internal fetch method that can call relative endpoints and figure out which method to call based on that. It doesn't actually perform any requests. Pretty cool, right? And with that, we actually fully implemented the load function and therefore finished the server side rendering implementation. Let's now check if the return data is available in the front end. But how do we get that data in our Svelte file? Well, simply by exporting a variable called data. SvelteKit will pass the return value of the load function into data and automatically set the type as well. We don't even have to specify it. But if you want, you can get the generated type from dollar sign types. Now let's see what's in that variable. If we print it out, you'll see that it contains the photos property. So let's remove the stringified data and pass data.photos to the gallery. Set the type of photos to our newly created interface and create an image element for every photo. The URLs of the images with different qualities are stored in the URLs property. For now, let's use the small image. SvelteKit cares about accessibility and warns you in case you forgot to add an alternate text. And Splash shares that information as well via the alt description property. Add the inline block class to show them next to each other instead of below each other. Congratulations, you just built your first server side rendered gallery app using SvelteKit where you can search for any photo you want. But let's make one more improvement. Right now we have to pass the photos to the gallery component, but in SvelteKit you can access the data from the parent server side load functions in any component. Therefore, we can use the page store, which contains a lot of data of the current page, such as the URL, form data, and the data from the server. Because this is a store, you need to add a dollar sign in front of it to get the actual stateful value. Get the photos from the data property. But as you'll see, the type is not set anymore. This is where the app.d.ts file comes into place. Extend the interface by adding an optional photos property in there. It needs to be optional because it's not available if you would render a different page that doesn't server side render the photos. And now our gallery component has a stateful typed photos property, which we don't need to pass down anymore. Let's just fall back on an empty array when the gallery component gets used in a page where the photos are not server side rendered. And as you'll see, everything still works as expected. That's it for this video. See you in the next one.